I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This is Console Wars! vacation was a good idea. I gotta say, this exotic cruise off the Jersey coast seemed a little sketchy at first, but it smells pretty good out here. It does not smell like burnt hair at all. No. <coughs> <coughs> Attention, we have an emergency. The captain has left the bridge to smell that New Jersey air, but hasn't returned. The captain is missing. Is anyone here a captain? We need a captain. So you need a captain. Well, I'm a captain, just not the boat kind. I mean, I could ricochet my shield off someone's head. That help? I'm a captain, but I'm more about feeding pure sugar to children. I mean, a balanced breakfast. I'm Captain Caveman. I'm a captain of the planet, but I can't help with the boat. I don't even know how to ride a bike. Captain N here. Not really a big boat guy myself, but I am friends with video game characters, and I have one of the coolest guns ever. Ah! Sorry about that. Well, I'm a captain here, and I know how to steer the ship. But I'm not going to do anything until all of you agree to join me and help me kill some children. Yes, children. So, who's with me? Maybe none of us captains are supposed to help. Maybe the power is yours. I understood that reference. You quote your own meme? Can't you say anything original? <sighs> no. I don't think I will. I am gonna choke you with my cereal. Hey, 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 hey. I also have one of the coolest belts ever. Any one of these buttons has gotta help, right? Okay, I've revised my conditions. You only have to help me kill one boy. Yes, one boy who's really annoying. He plays a fife. Man, this is going nowhere. I mean, maybe we should just get off the boat. We haven't even left the dock yet. Man, it feels like we're never gonna get a vacation. I know. What was the deal with that Captain Morgan? He really wanted to kill kids. Captain Morgan? That was Captain Hook. Really? Wow. No wonder he didn't like me throwing those cans of Coke at him. Huh, Captain Hook. You know what that makes me wanna play? Hook. Hook the video game? Wow, I used to play that all the time. Well, for the Sega Genesis. Yeah, but it was better for the Super Nintendo. What? That's it! Are we doing this? Are the top 10 selling beers by volume in the world? Coors, Corona, Yangqing, Harbin, Heineken, Skoll, Bud Light, Tsingtao, Budweiser, and Snow? Yes! Best Hook! Hook was a 1991 film directed by Steven Spielberg. It had mixed reception, but was considered a box office hit. With its success came merchandise. Hook toys, trading cards, Happy Meals, bed sheets. I had those. And of course, video games. There were a lot of Hook video games for the NES, Game Boy, Game Gear, and Sega CD, just to name a few. Today we're looking at the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games, both developed by Ukiyo-dai and published by Sony ImageSoft. Almost identical games, but there are some differences. Which one's better? Let's find out. These games look... okay. Yeah, kind of the same mediocre look. Let's start with the characters. You have Peter Pan. It doesn't really look like Robin Williams, but he certainly passes for Peter Pan. Hook looks pretty good, and so do the Lost Boys. You got Rufio, the large one, the one with the top hat, and the rest. There's even some mermaids. Overall, not a lot of details in these character designs, but you can certainly identify them. There's quite a range of enemies too. 
You have pirates, of course. After that, they kind of just throw whatever at you with animals, circus people, skeletons, and even plants. Not the best character animation either, but that's what you get for a 90s game based on a film. And the frame rate is definitely on the lower side. The levels kind of look like they're from Neverland. Sure, this looks like it could be the Lost Boys hideout. This definitely looks like a pirate town and ship, but the other levels are pretty generic. You have your snow levels, your caves, your woods, lots of them. Again, nothing great, but since it's based on a movie, your expectations shouldn't be that high anyway. These two games look the same. You know what that means. Super Nintendo game is cropped. Side by side, you could tell that the Super Nintendo game is definitely... Wait a minute, is it cropped? There's something wrong with my side-by-side -side comparison. No, actually, the Super Nintendo game isn't cropped. What? Are you telling me they made games that look the same, almost identical, and the Super Nintendo game isn't cropped? Um, yeah. Oh no, now I'm gonna look like an idiot trying to sell these Super Nintendo always cropped shirts. I knew you were gonna regret ordering that many. Oh no, it's fine, I can just write accept hook on the back, see? Just 9,999 more to go! Ooh, shoot me! Well, I guess while you're doing that, I'll explain why there's a lot of reasons the Super Nintendo game looks better. Dang it! I wrote it wrong! It's okay. Just scratch it out. Do it again. Let's start with the colors. Look at Peter Pan on Super Nintendo. Nice green iconic outfit. On Sega? Yellow? Kinda brown? It could almost pass for the Peter Pan from the 90s Fox series. And overall, the Super Nintendo game looks more colorful. You see this with the backgrounds. More monochrome on Sega, more contrast on Super Nintendo. And one more small detail. When you get scared by the tiger on Super Nintendo, you turn gray. On Sega, no color change. Color's all you got, that's really reaching. It's not. My game has plenty of other reasons it looks better. On Super Nintendo, you have the elements. You see it in the first level. Rain, snow, leaves falling. On Sega, you don't have any of that. You don't have any snow in this area like the movie. Speaking of snow, look at the snow level on Sega. It looks fine, I guess. Now on Super Nintendo, it's actually snowing. No elements ever on Sega. Elements are only part of it. Let's look at the water. On Super Nintendo, you see the surface of the water moving. On Sega, it doesn't move. It only kind of moves when you move. Not to mention, it just looks better being underwater on Super Nintendo. In some levels, when you go underwater, there's a change in Peter's palette because, you know, he's underwater. On Sega, no change. Now, look at the water in the background of this Super Nintendo level. Moving like a waterfall should. On Sega, frozen. There's lots of instances and the water just doesn't move on Sega. It just shows more effort went into the Super Nintendo graphics. And it's not just the water. Fire looks better too. Check out the fire in the background of this level. On Super Nintendo, you can see a pulsate. On Sega, no pulsating. You can see the same thing with the fire during the boss fight. Now this level is unique in that the flame follows you around. If you get too far from it, you lose visibility. On Sega, everything goes black. On Super Nintendo, the background stays visible, which is a much cooler effect. When you look closer, Super Nintendo definitely has the edge with graphics. For being more colorful, more elements, better water effects, and better fire effects, best graphics go to Super Nintendo! Presentation is also very similar. Both games have cutscenes. You have your intro, some cutscenes between levels, and the ending. They even show Rufio dying. You get to be sad all over again. Between levels, you see the map of Neverland. You don't actually control your character here, they just show you the progress you've made. The HUDs are pretty much identical too. You have the life bar, fly power, score, number of lives, and time. Very simple presentation that's pretty much the same. Mm hmm. Really? No, no, mine's totally better. Let's start with the HUDs. The HUDs are both on scrolls. Behind the scroll on Sega, the background is black. On Super Nintendo, it's not. You see the level. Also, the Super Nintendo scroll has some holes in it. You can see the level in those holes too. It's a nice detail. HUDs alone shouldn't make your presentation better. Nah, uh, you're probably right. But the cutscenes will. Look at Hook Ship on Super Nintendo. You get a nice view of the city from there. Now, let's see how that city looks on Sega. <laughs> Just kidding, no city on Sega. And eh, maybe you're in outer space. Now, on Super Nintendo, when Hook takes your kids, you read his letter. You see it too. On Sega, you don't see the letter. 
And one more thing, credits. It's a small difference, but here's the credits on Super Nintendo. You get a recap of the boss battles. You get to revisit all your hard work. Not on Sega, just credits. Nobody cares about your hard work here. Close, but again, Super Nintendo has the edge. For having a better HUD, more in the cutscenes, and more effort with the credits, best presentation goes to Super Nintendo! Sound is very similar. Lots of music from the movie. John Williams' score is on full display here. There's also additional music by Tetsuyi Furumoto and Katsunori Uji. Super Nintendo music sounds more orchestral. Sega's music's a little more upbeat. Give me the upbeat Sega soundtrack any day. That's fair, but the Super Nintendo game has more songs. The Sega game has seven different songs playing for all the levels. The Super Nintendo game has nine. And let's talk about the boss themes. Both games have the same boss theme. However, Super Nintendo uses a new theme when fighting the final boss. Huh. Oh. Sega just reuses the other theme. And let's talk about sound effects, too. Both games have very basic sound effects, but they definitely sound better on Super Nintendo. Listen to enemies using a bow and arrow on Super Nintendo. And nothing spectacular, but it works. Now Sega. Why is it a boing sound effect? Now listen to this tiger roar on Super Nintendo. Okay, not bad. And now listen to Sega. It just sounds like paper ripping. Listen to attacking an enemy on Super Nintendo. Sounds fine. And how do enemies getting attack sound on Sega? Say it with me, farts. And no denying it, I got the edge with sound. For having more songs and much better sound effects, best sound goes to Super Nintendo! Gameplay is very similar. Both games are action platformers. You only have two buttons, one to jump and one to attack. If you have fairy dust, you can fly by hitting the jump button while in the air. Then just move in any direction with the D-pad. Swimming almost has the same controls. Hold jump to float, and then use the D-pad to move in any direction. This game moves slow. Painfully slow. Oof. Luckily, you can speed things up. Hold the attack button to run, or fly faster. Weird choice to use the attack button to move faster instead of jump, or possibly one of the unused buttons. So weird a choice, I didn't even realize this was an option until beating the game. Twice. Lots of power-ups in this game. We'll start with flying. In order to fly, you need Tinkerbell and her fairy dust to fill up your meter. This is actually pretty cool because you can keep going back. Tinkerbell gives you unlimited fairy dust. You can fill up on the ground or while you're still flying. It's much better than refills being a random power-up you get from killing enemies. Other power-ups are the sword, which lets you shoot lasers, kind of like Zelda. But you lose it as soon as you're hit. There are leaves which can extend your life bar, only for max though. There's food to replenish health, there's one-ups, and various treasures to give you points. There's not really much depth there. Nah, pretty simple games. The enemies are easy to kill, the levels are short, some levels have bosses, and some don't. Bosses are simple too, as most die with three hits. No passwords are saving, but they're not really needed either, as the game is fairly short. The game starts off very easy, but there is a ramp up in difficulty, especially when you get to the pirate town. Specifically, the sections with the guns. They can shoot in any direction. And I don't mean eight different directions. I mean 360 degrees. Any direction. 
No taking a breath around these guys. It is tough. It was the early 90s, man. White Broncos were still just white Broncos. And video games based on movies just weren't what they are now. It gives you enough of the movie experience. I mean, flying the most unique mechanic actually works pretty well. So which gameplay is better? They're identical. What are they? The Super Nintendo game has 12 levels. The Sega game has 11. What? We have the same number of levels. Where did you come up with that nonsense? I read it on Wikipedia. Yeah, I read that too, but it's wrong. The Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games have the same number of levels. Wait, so you knew it was wrong, but didn't edit it? Jeez, what do I look like? Somebody who's not incredibly lazy? I mean, somebody should fix it, but who? The power is yours. Well, actually, I have something your game doesn't. Let's take a look at the points. On Super Nintendo, every 100,000 points, you get a 1-up. Great! Makes collecting treasure worth it. On Sega, 100,000 points gets you nothing. Good day, sir! No one ups for the points on Sega. Not at 100,000, 200,000, etc. It makes the treasure unnecessary. Why are there points on Sega? These games don't even have scoreboards. The Super Nintendo game, where points aren't pointless. It might seem ridiculous, but it does give my game an edge. For getting a 1-up every 100,000 points, and that's all. Best gameplay goes to Super Nintendo. Both games are incredibly similar, but one is better, and that's Hook for the Super Nintendo. It has better graphics for being more colorful, having the elements, and better background effects. It has better presentation for having the better HUD, more in cutscenes, and more effort with the credits. It has better sound with more songs and much better sound effects. And it has better gameplay with a 1-up every 100,000 points. Now, these games aren't that great, and they are very similar. And since they're roughly the same price, why not play the one that has a little more in each category? Best hook goes to Super Nintendo! Hey, I just got the refund for the cruise. What should we do now? I have an idea. And flying to a resort is much better than going on a cruise. And it looks like we get there in like an hour. I'm just gonna shut down and relax for the rest of the time. Attention, the pilots have become violently ill, like in the movie Airplane. And now no one can fly the plane, like in the movie Airplane. Is anyone here a doctor? This should go well. I am a doctor. But saving people's not really my thing. I'm more of a conquest, kind of takeover stuff kind of guy. Marvel characters are such dorks. Dr. Light from DC here. But I'm not really about saving people either. He's not Dr. White. I am. A doctor who helps humanity by making robots. Oh, give me a break. Your robots have killed more people than I have. Eh, uh, that's true. I'm a doctor. I can help. If you let me out, I promise not to eat anyone raw. Great Scott! The odds of us actually surviving this are 3,720 to 1. The same odds that the Millennium Falcon had of surviving the asteroid field. I'm your Huckleberry. I'm only a dentist. But maybe I could help. But first, some libations. At least people know who I am, Dr. Light. Whose nemesis are you? Dr. Dark? You got defeated by Squirrel Girl. Twice! What's the matter, Doom? Can't handle a squirrel? I didn't originally want to make robots. I wanted to be a proctologist. But things got really messy. Speaking of butts, are there any I can eat? They're my favorite. Oh, this is getting heavy. Heavy? I finally get it. It has nothing to do with the Earth's gravitational pull, more the gravity of the situation. Oh, I have to tell Marty. If we don't die. I could also shoot the pilots. Help them out of their misery. I'll do that for free. But first, some libations. Foolish doctors. 
I'm going to be the only one who survives here, because I stole a vial of pixie dust from a little boy. Now all I have to do is think a happy thought, and I'll be able to fly out of here. Yes, just a happy thought, and I'll be able to... to... Oh, bugger. I seem to have lost in the vial. Hey, I found a vial of pixie dust. Maybe it'll make us fly. What do you think? Worth a shot. What was your happy thought? Blast processing. You? Gladiator movies. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Support us on Patreon for early releases, bonus content, and the Discord. And check out our live channel, Console Wars Live. Special thanks to Video Games Monthly for the donation of the two games. And thanks to everyone who entered our giveaway with them. Congrats to the winner. Didn't know about the giveaway? Well, then be sure to follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later! Very similar. Lots of music from the movie. This is right up there with the.